All right, we're going to call to order this uh, public hearing on the uh, J.C. Booth uh, Middle School Projects um, replacement or renovation. And um, just need a uh, motion and a second for approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right, I think we're going to start off with the presentation. Okay. Um, We've been sharing information. I know Mr. Sanders, Mr. Satterfield will come and uh, share the information that we shared at our Monday meeting. We've uh, one thing that I would want the board and the community to know: we, as we've received questions, uh, we've been working to try to answer those and be as transparent as we can with that. And we've added those onto the uh, supporting documents in eBoard. Uh, so, Mr. Sanders and Mr. Satterfield, if you will, come up and we'll get the uh, uh, overview started so that everybody can be on the same page at the same time. Thank you, Dr. Barron and the board. Um, get that pulled up. We'll, we'll begin the presentation just uh, going through and showing you projects that uh, we have completed out of our five-year facilities plan. Uh, since 2013, the facilities plan is developed, something that's developed in conjunction with the DOE, uh, the State Department of Education. Uh, we uh, initially, we go through with our facilities department, our architect and uh, our facilities consultant from the DOE to create it. And then there's a team brought in uh, that, who review it, uh, go with us and visit uh, several areas, and then, uh, then it's approved, and then ultimately submitted to the Board of Education for approval. And uh, you can go ahead, yeah. And so uh, the, the plan, as I, I stated on Monday, is, is a fluid plan. It does, uh, can and will change uh, frequently. And a, a good uh, example of that is the, uh, the Huddleston renovation that we had to do several years ago, about three years ago, I guess it was, uh, that uh, we had some issues with mold there. And I had to jump up ahead of uh, several other projects. And so it delayed those projects by, by a little bit of time uh, to get those, uh, those completed. So. That is, that is not unusual for it to change. And uh, so just that's, that is a list of, of projects that we completed since 2013 from the five-year facility plan. There have been other projects completed that weren't in the plan, but I wanted to, to point out those that have been in a plan, and, uh, and it encompasses schools from all across the, uh, the county. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Satterfield, and, and he'll go through the presentation that he's been giving you. Thank you, Mike. Good evening. Uh, start off with the uh, the two options there for uh, Booth Middle School, and this is uh, actually this has come together over about a year and a half or two of, of working on this project. And at one time we had about five options, and we narrowed it down uh, to to two viable options. Uh, option one. Uh, was to renovate and modernize the existing facility that's on the parkway. Uh, the, initially, we started out with our standard renovations, um, and from that, when we made a presentation to the board, uh, the board wanted us to expand the scope of work, and we've got it listed here, uh, to be more of a transformational design uh, we were going to increase the classroom space to 1,400 FTE, uh, in, increase the size of some of the classrooms. Uh, the existing classrooms are, are somewhat small. We want to increase those, uh, improve circulation throughout the building, uh, and both inside and outside. Uh, we were going to uh, build a new PE facility. The other one is, is much smaller than needed. Um, we were going to uh, change and incorporate a, a new cafeteria, a new kitchen, and some uh, expansion of the fine arts area, uh, along with our standard painting, floor covering, ceiling, LED lightings, upgrades. Um, and so we, we increased that scope of work to include that to, for a transformational uh, approach and uh, here is a, an aerial view of that. The darker shaded areas would be where the new uh, buildings would have been built uh, to expand this. M most of it is on the north side of the existing booth. 
Um, there is a small kitchen addition on the south side adjacent to the bus loop. But this was a, the transformational plan that we came up with. Uh, when we presented that to the board, as you'll recall, the board asked us to also take a look at the feasibility of a new facility, and that would be our, our option number two. Um, that's the floor plan for option number one. Uh, there's a, a couple of uh, elevations, a front, rear, and side elevations for option one. Option two, number two, was to construct a replacement facility for J.C. Booth Middle School uh, on 37 acres that we had per the board had purchased on off of Stagecoach Road. Uh, this would also be a 1400 FTE building. Uh, we worked closely with uh, the administration at Booth Middle School, and basically we took the existing plan of Bennett's Mill Middle School and then expanded it, made changes to it to uh, suit the needs of, of the booth staff and administration. Uh, particularly in the area of fine arts, we expanded those areas and, and technology. Uh, we also bumped the floor plan up to the 1400 FTE. This is a, a, a site plan for that. Um, you, you've got the existing uh, stagecoach road runs as you're looking at it right to left, and then the uh, the new proposed facility would be above that. The area to the right is a, a practice area that's closest to the church property, is uh, an area about the size of two uh, football fields that would be for a practice area. Um, and then we, uh, board also acquired about three and a half acres uh, south of the stagecoach property, um, and we would like to uh, expand a road there through that property to tie into Carriage Lane. Um, there are actually two uh, residences on that piece of property, and one of them we would would have to tear down to put the road through. Um, here's a floor plan. Um, as I said, it's very similar to Bennett's Mill Middle School. Uh, and it's got <coughs> some uh, front and rear elevations there. Uh, this is just a, a uh, cost comparison of the two options. Uh, basically, uh, your all-in cost, including um, Construction, architectural engineering fees uh, it is approaching $40 million for option one, and then option two is uh, approaching $46 million. Now, of course, that doesn't include land costs for, for either one because we already have those. Uh, but uh, we would, um, with the transformational uh, option, option number one, we would receive uh, uh, in the upper six millions, probably 6.8, 6.9 million from the state, from capital outlay for modernization funding. Um, since Booth turn, actually turned 40 years old this past summer, uh, there's a new funding mechanism that was put in place a couple years ago for uh, facilities of that age where you get a, get a little bit more money from the state because of the age. Um, and, and so that would reduce the net to about $33 million for that option. Uh, the uh, option uh, two, um, we, we do not receive any state funding for that. That would be all at local expense. Mr. Satterfield, if you will, just for point of clarification, um, Option one uh, that you have here, is that a firm price or a projected price? That's a projected price. And option two, is that, that a, That's a firm. We, that, we have that's, that's received bids on that, and we're locked in to and, that price. And that's, uh, you know, not that we're splitting hairs here, but we want to be sure because I know we've had some questions about why costs have changed and, you know, what we can do is provide projections based on uh, you know, 
the going rate, square footage costs, those kinds of things. But we don't really know what the final cost is going to be until it's actually bid out and we receive that maximum guaranteed price. That, that's right. absolutely true. Okay. And we have seen, uh, mm -hmm. since we put the five-year facility plan together, uh, where Booth was one of those projects, um, that was approved by the, the State Board of Ed in uh, July of uh, 2017. But just in, in that time span, in, in the past two years, almost two and a half years, we've seen a significant increase in construction costs in the neighborhood of 25%. Um, so uh, we've gone from uh, being able to build in the, oh, um, 175 to 200 dollars a square foot range to you can hear anything from two and a quarter to 275 now particularly on a high school uh, they're much more expensive to build than than an elementary school uh, middle school kind of falls in the middle i think ours actually worked out to about 223 dollars a square foot uh, for the the price that we received from major okay but we have seen a significant increase and in, uh, and there's no guarantee on that projection for the option one at all. Okay, good deal. Yeah. Um, next, uh, coming up, I know um, one of the questions as Mr. Sanders and Mr. Satterfield went out to have conversations with uh, our public, and when I say our public, we're talking about our, our PTO, our school council, our um, uh, community there at um, uh, in the booth area uh, we've had several meetings like that and probably one of the the most frequent questions dealt with what would happen to JC Booth Middle School uh, if a replacement school is built and I think that's a, a very legitimate question we think it's uh, an asset regardless whether we go to the replacement model or the the new model it's an asset for us and uh, in having conversations I think it's important to know that this there's a there's a bigger view than just one building uh, and the rationale behind this okay if you'll move up in the next slide uh, currently right now at Fayette Intermediate we have what uh, is termed our center of innovation and it's where we have our uh, most of our post-secondary uh, partners there uh, that come in, particularly Southern Crescent, is there. Um, we meet very regularly with our planning and zoning committee people uh, from all of our municipalities, and uh, we do that uh, to kind of get a, a handle on all of the potential growth uh, that's happening, the, the building permits, the uh, those kinds of things, and, and we do that trying to stay ahead of the game. Uh, this is not something that will happen tomorrow. It, it, depending upon which way the board goes, it may not happen at all. Um, but if, if we uh, decide to go with the replacement school, uh, we want uh, the community to know that we plan to use the old booth as an educational facility. And uh, our intent or our thinking would be to move the COI to the old booth site. Um, if we can move on down and part of, and I, I wanna say this too, the, uh, we do anticipate growth in Fayetteville. Uh, we see the, uh, uh, the planning that's going on here in town and we know that there's gonna be some more density which means more kids coming. Now we don't have those kids today, so that's the reason why this is probably a year or two down the road. Uh, we've got the same issue with Tyrone Elementary. We're seeing a good bit of growth in the West Village. And um, uh, when Tyrone closed, one of the uh, primary reasons it closed was because of the lack of sewer. We had two septic systems there. One had already <coughs> collapsed and couldn't be repaired. The other was uh, on its last leg. And um, that was, I think, one of the main reasons the decision was made to close Tyrone. Uh, with the growth in the West Village and in the Tyrone area, there's a possibility that this school may also need to be reopened. Currently, we have several people who are leasing parts of the building, so uh, I think it's good to have 
people in a building, not just leave it vacant. And it, it serves a double purpose. It gives them an opportunity and space where they can do their activities, but it also helps us. Um, so the, the Tyrone uh, project is dependent upon enrollment and it's also dependent upon sewer being added. Um, it's our understanding in talking with uh, representatives from Tyrone that the contract has been let. I think they're planning on starting construction <coughs> on the new sewer opportunity uh, sometime late October, November. And if that happens and the enrollment increases, then that would give us an opportunity to take care of some of the increased growth uh, where we are in Peachtree City. We uh, don't have a lot of um, uh, wiggle room as far as growth in <coughs> Crabapple, Kedron, or Peachtree City Elementary. So that's another piece of the equation that we're looking at. So ultimately, um, uh, we're looking at these issues not just in isolation. It's a part of the overall uh, uh, facility plan for the district. Uh, so if we were to look at this, Kay, uh, what would we do? We've had conversations with our uh, post-secondary partners, Southern Crescent. We also have had par uh, partnership conversations with Clayton State. Uh, there would be no prohibition against other post-secondary opportunities uh, in sharing that space along with our students at the COI. So if we're looking uh, to answer a question, we have, um, we have a good intent to move forward. Um, there's no need for us to make this a firm situation until we make an ultimate decision about uh, what, what we're going to do with the current booth. Um, so. I uh, wanted to make sure that we had had that clarity and that there is a plan moving forward um, if and when the board makes a decision about Booth. Um, hey, just a clarification. Yes, um, if, if we move the center of innovation out of um, Fayette Intermediate, uh, what's the class? What's the current classroom requirement and what do you think that will be in the future? For? For the center of innovation. Say, well, part of that, and I think, that's, I think that's a good question, Dr. Marshman. The um, part of the issue is, is it, it's dependent upon the programming. Right. Uh, if we look at what currently is housed there at the COI, we have our healthcare science, we have our culinary arts, we have our film, um, and Clayton State, they have academic classes, the English, math, science, social studies, primarily those academic core classes. That can be handled in our current space at the current booth because all we really need there is um, internet and access, and so we can we can handle that right away. But if the universities or colleges decide to put different programming there, there may need to be some facility design work done. For example, and this is just off the top of my head, if if Clay, uh, Southern Crescent wanted to add a welding program, for example. That would need to be specially designed in that facility. So um, it's not that um, I don't want to give you a, a real clean, neat answer, but right. it, it would depend upon the programs that were housed there. So the reason maybe six or eight classrooms now would want to expand that in the future? Uh, absolutely. Right. I know there are a lot of classes. In my conversations with Dr. Hines and with Dr. Thomas, they both have said they would like to expand their class offerings. Great. Okay. All right, well, we can uh, move to the uh, public comment. Um, the Fayette County Board of Education welcomes and encourages citizens to attend its meeting, and as part of our general operating procedure, the board offers an opportunity for Fayette County residents, businesses, organizations, school system employees, or students to address the board at its regular business meetings. The public comment period is designed to gain input from the public pursuant to the guidelines outlined in policy BCBI and not for immediate responses by the board to the public comments presented. Accordingly, board members will not respond during the meeting to the comments or questions raised during the public comment period. If there does need to be a response, the um, superintendent can, can um, offer it up. Speakers will have up to three minutes to make their presentations. A timer is visible from the podium. Please conclude your remarks when the buzzer sounds. When several in individuals wish to address the same topic or issue, the group is encouraged to designate a spokesperson. 
The board will not permit anyone to become personally abusive of an individual student, board members, or board employees. The board will take comments and questions under advisement and responses, if needed, will be provided by the superintendent, as I said. Uh, please come to the podium when your um, name is called. Um, state your name and address before beginning your presentation as the timer will begin when you start your statement. And and Mr. Chair, um, we're not bumping up against a meeting tonight, so I'd just like to make a motion we do a time limit because I'd like to hear what people have to say. Is anybody else? And hearing no second, then. <laughs> Well, we we want to make sure we get everybody yeah, included. So I don't want to cut anybody off. Right. Well, I got nowhere to go. Okay. Yeah. All right, Mr. Manwaring. I thank you. Uh, picture, if you will, school setting, and a student is lying on the floor. The nurse says, call 911 quickly. Now, which school would you rather that child be in? Booth Middle, where there's easy access, two roads, multi-roads, cars can get over out of the way, or the new Stagecoach Road, which will have one narrow way in and out through a dangerous intersection? I think you know the answer to that question. Will we have emergencies? As a former middle school administrator, I know the answer is absolutely. You will. We will. Children uh, just do. And they happen at the very worst times, difficult times. For example, I was assistant principal bus duty. I notice a girl and a boy arguing. The girl turns to walk away. The boy reaches and grabs her before I can get over there. And he slams her head face first into the bus, brutally, as hard as he could. She needed immediate assistance, emergency. And it was the worst time possible. It was school dismissal. School dismissal. Buses going every which way, cars, parents, children. That's the way it happens. We need to be prepared for it. And that's the reason that our state school board recommends on new school sites that they have not one, but two routes, entrance and exit, two roads to the site. Uh, we have one planned. What's my recommendation? Well, we need to have a meeting of all parties involved. And that means Peachtree City officials who would be responsible for building, upgrading the road and putting in stoplights at the end of Stagecoach Road on Robinson. That means State Department personnel. Uh, that means the State Department of Transportation that must revamp totally the lights the lights at the end of carriage lane and probably those that on robinson where it goes over this is not a minor problem it isn't just oh we've got difficulty with roads it could be critical and it could be critical in your decision i hope uh, there's no way uh, that this should be overlooked uh, i hope that you have that meeting with all the different parties. You have a comprehensive plan so that indeed when the parent asks you, will my child be as safe at Stagecoach as they were at Booth, you'll be able to answer positively. All right. Thank yes, you. Yes, indeed, they will. Thank, Thank you. you. Kelly Raines. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> my name is Kelly Raines. I live at 109 Carriage Lane. And I am very, very concerned about the integrity of my small little neighborhood that um, I've worked very, very hard to be a resident, resident of, that I've 
paid my taxes and contributed to this, to Fayette County for five generations. And then to see everything that you've worked so hard for, um, I mean, you've bought two houses across the street from my house. And it's my understanding that somehow you're gonna make a road from Stagecoach um, through this property on right onto my street, right onto Carriage Lane. We have no curbs, we have no gutters, we have wells, we have city water, um, we don't have city water, uh, we don't have sewer, um, we have septic tanks. Um, it's a narrow road. It winds to the left, it winds to the right. It has blind spots, it winds up and down. Uh, I just cannot even imagine um, either a car lane uh, or a bus lane going up and down this street safely. Um, there is no golf cart access. There is no safe place for children to walk, um, no crosswalks and such like we have on Peachtree Parkway for the children now. Um, I'm sure you're aware that there is uh, a large amount of student traffic that is foot traffic, skateboards, um, bicycles, um, scooters, all the different ways that the kids get to school there. There's not gonna be access for that here. And I haven't really heard a plan for that, you know, or any talk about that. That concerns me um, greatly. Um, I know that you said that, that you don't answer questions back, but, but I do have one that I wanna throw out there. Uh, I'm not sure if my understanding is correct. I heard Mr. Satterfield say that for option two, that would be local funding only. Is that affirmative, is that correct? What about option one? Does option one also mean that it's local funding only or is there other funding available if we use option one, which is already 10 million less than option two? It's a mix. So there would, so, so in addition to it already being 10 million less on your proposal, we could also get some extra help with that as well. So I, I think those are some very, very important things that need to be considered and, and looked into. Um, I think there's so many things that you could change about the old booth, um, but, and it has an amazing location. The location of this is wrong and you'll never be able to change that. Once you pick the wrong location, you're gonna be stuck with it. You're not gonna be able to change this location. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Cole Piper. Hey, how y'all doing today? Hi. Name's Cole Piper. I live at 224 Flat Creek Court. Um, may not seem like I have a dog in this fight, but you know, I'm young. I own my own house. I feel like I should get more involved in the community I live in, grew up in. Um, with this school, I just feel like it's honestly a, too much of a waste of money. I understand. I went to Booth myself. You know, it was convenient. I lived right there in Glenlock. Um, you know, for used to walk my dog to school with my dad. You know, it was great. Um, you know, understand. The big big picture is I just don't think the money is worth it. Um, you know, I feel like it's just a waste of money rather than just renovate the old Booth where you know so many generations went to. And you know, I feel like. I feel like Stagecoach could be useful, but I feel like it could be useful in another sense, maybe administrative buildings or whatever y'all are planning on doing with the booth, you know, with Southern Crescent or Clayton State. Wouldn't be as much traffic, wouldn't need as many buses, wouldn't affect as many people. Um, overall, I think it would be cheaper because I'm sure there was, even though it seems lost to me, um, the need for another building. I feel like whatever suffice, whatever you build, just decide to build at Stagecoach. I don't, I don't really have much else to say other than I think the money is not really worth it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Dr. Todd. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to see you. couple of issues with my back but anyway just wanted to make a couple of comments and ask some questions knowing that the, the answers will come later uh, first of all I'm one of the 70 to 75 percent of the taxpayers in this county who do not have a direct child or grandchild in the school system 
Uh, I don't need to remind you, but I will, that you are responsible for the good use of the taxpayers' money. You are also responsible for the good use of the space that's available already. Uh, I've looked at data, and I cannot find much that supports the need for a new school. Uh, your enrollment studies don't indicate that we need that. We have excess capacity where if we need to, you can tweak attendance lines and come down. And the question to the board is, are you unwilling to redistrict? And if that is indeed the case, you need to tell us as taxpayers and citizens of this county. Uh, as a side comment, the original proposal to renovate Booth would come in according to every figure I can find within a reasonable budget. Somehow or another, I think the train got off the track with by asking what people want instead of what they need. But anyway, I'm wondering about this expenditure of the $50 million, 40, 50, whatever it winds up being, and what it will cost to convert Booth to whatever uh, additional needs that you would have there. I would give you a brief history lesson about the high schools in this county. And this fits into what Dr. Barrow said about a bigger view. In the 60s, the state of Georgia developed a prototype high school called Comprehensive High School. They put one in every congress congressional district in this state as a model. This county adopted that model in 1976 and has had it since then. And that model produced some of the best educated students in this land. My concern is as we begin to think about the use of Booth, what impact is that use going to have on the integrity of the current high school? And last but not least, uh, to what extent do you intend to dismantle the existing career tech programs in order to do whatever it is you're proposing in the, high, uh, in the new center. My question is, please look at it from a whole view. The integrity of the high school, as well as what you want to do for post-secondary education. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Mayor Flesch. Hi. Um, I wanted to read to you a letter that you have before you signed by all myself and all the members of the City Council. Please accept this letter as formal notice of our opposition to the Stagecoach Road carriage lane location for the construction of a proposed middle school. With very limited improvement options, this site will place an undue burden on the transportation network in the immediate vicinity. Based on our previous experience, traffic improvements can easily reach millions of dollars with limited impact on mobility within the corridor. No such funds are included in our current or future city budgets. Further, we request that a comprehensive traffic study be conducted that incorporates the impact of the school along with proposed new development in the area before a final decision is made on the location of a new school. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration of our concerns. Right. Thank you. Kirsten Mellum. Good evening, my name is Kirsten Mellum. I'm at 300 Penland Place in Maple Shade Subdivision in Peachtree City. Um, I thank you for um, opening up this forum to the public. 
We recently, I was president of the PTO at Booth for two years, last year being my most recent year. So I've seen a lot of growth at Booth, and uh, Booth Middle School is really close to my heart. I have a seventh grader there, so I kind of know kind of the ins and outs of Booth, and I've seen, I know I'm a lot, I'm friends with a lot of the teachers there, and I like to hear their feedback of what they see for the future of Booth. And of course, they have bright futures for the for Booth and what's coming up. Um, so um, I'm here to represent some of the students that are there at Booth and the teachers and their visions of the future. And I'm very excited about the new project, um, and, and that would be the new project on Stagecoach Road. Um, we recently had a PTO meeting back in March, and we took um, a vote of if, if parents would want to see uh, the renovation at Booth or if they would not want to see a new facility. There were roughly 50 people at the meeting that I attended. Only four of them did not want the, uh, new, the new building there on Stagecoach Road. So I, to me, that makes a big impact. I know that the teachers are almost 100% for this new building. They've seen um, Booth, if you will, it, they're, it's kind of bursting at the seams. Um, I moved here about five years ago. I'm very, uh, I feel very lucky to be part of this community. I love this community. Um, and I, I know that there's growth here and a lot of people want to live in Peachtree City, which is a great thing. However, I think Peachtree City, it's very important to keep up with technology and the sign of the times. And, and it's important to put money into education and also have, have a facility that can house the, uh, this, the, the future. Um, I know with option one, we're looking at renovation. I did want to bring up with renovation right now, the traffic isn't that great at our current booth. We, I, I am a carpooler or I bring my kids in. We have backups all the way along Peachtree City out Peachtree Parkway all the way almost to Walgreens someday. So that's a long, that's a long way. So when you talk about traffic flow, if we could put a facility, I see it on Stagecoast Road having a lot more of a better traffic flow, honestly. So, um, that's as far as the traffic flow. Another thing for option two with this new building I wanted to bring up, it's very important with technology. They're talking about expanding that. That's so important for our children in the future and I just wanted to my child will never go to this new booth but I just wanted to be a voice for the kids of the future and represent them that technology and all the things that will go into this renovation will be very important to them thank you so much okay thank you um, Holly um, Mateitas um, forgive me if I've gotten that wrong but Good evening. It's Holly Hans Mastas. It's it's a hard one. Like the month of May, the beginning of it, then Mastas. Um, uh, thank you for uh, representing our school district and for the work that you do and the success of the county's educational system so far. Um, I I'm new to the area. I just moved here from Valdosta, Georgia, in July. Um, I moved into Centennial neighborhood. It is, um, I brought my map with me because I don't know where many things are. It's on the north side of 54 and the west side of 74. Um, I came here and uh, looking for better opportunity. My husband is a professor at Georgia Military College and he teaches political science at the Fairburn campus. Um, I had several questions. Um, my interest in being here tonight is I specifically bought into the neighborhood that I was in for the purpose of the schools that it was zoned for. Um, there was a comment on the Take Action for Public Education Facebook page regarding redistricting specifically my neighborhood and Plantera. So that's Centennial and Plantera, which are districted for Peachtree City Elementary, Booth Middle School, and McIntosh High School. So our neighborhood is very concerned about that. They've been very vocal about it. Um, there was um, Brian Anderson, um, I think it was a list of several 
um, issues that had been raised in public comment. I don't think that was an official board commentary, but it sparked some attention and we're responding to it. I don't know if I'm the only one here from Centennial tonight. Okay, we've got several people in Centennial. Um, so we're paying attention <laughs> to what's going on with any redistricting. So I had several questions. Um, the first is, when was the land purchase and sale closed? The closing date for that for Booth Middle School. Um, I gather it was a while ago that it was purchased. Um, my second question is, regarding the post districts one through five, um, how is the representation spread out? Are they geographic or do they represent, does each board member represent the entire county collectively? And what does it mean to be at large? So if I have a question um, from my district, do I go to, um, Scott Hollowell, Barry Marchman, or Brian Anderson, who's at large, which sounds like he represents at large, or do I go to all of you because you have no um, no affiliation to the specific post that you're in? Um, also, if redistricting does happen, um, how much notice do we get? How do we get the notice? And does the uh, Peachtree City have any influence on that as far as the redistricting and the property values. Uh, the proximity of Centennial is very close to the avenue, which I think is a very important part to the city um, and all of the people, including people who don't have children. So if you're walking distance and golf, dis golf cart distance to the avenue and then you redistrict um, Centennial, then all those property values could go down and then that could affect a vital part of the city. All right, thank you. I just wanna answer one quick question that I think, we, I think we all operate as if we all op represent the whole county. And um, there's somebody that was, has to be elected in your geographic area, have to, they have to live in your neighborhood, but I think you can call any one of us with your concerns. Yeah, it's, it's actually my district but um, a good practice is just email all the board members. So we're all in the loop. All right, uh, Steve Green. Um, I am Steve Green. I'm the current principal at JC Booth Middle. I uh, at first was hesitant to come and speak tonight because I have an obvious bias, but I also realize that everybody that comes to speak has a particular perspective that, that they are coming from. And so I just wanted to share, I thought it was invaluable to, while I have spoken to individual board members at times about this, I thought it would be valuable publicly to, to state what my perspective is as the current principal. You all have a lot of factors to consider. Uh, I've been listening very intently. I'm reading the paper I, just like you are and I don't envy the decision. Uh, from my perspective, I just wanted to kind of hit a couple points in the short time. I'm not used to being in time like this. It's difficult. But um, one of the things that's brought up in, in a lot of the uh, discussions um, is the age of the school. And I've heard, you know, every time a building turns 40, are we going to build a new school? Well, uh, as a 32-year veteran educator, I've been in four different schools, uh, two of which have been older than Booth. And, but those two, uh, were much more functional. Uh, the core structure of Booth needs some work. When we first started discussing the minimal renovation, we were going to address several of those. But as we discussed that, that we realized there are a lot of things, such as the classroom sizes and the hallways, that really couldn't be addressed with even the minimal um, uh, renovation. As we move to the discussion of a more transformational, and, and I will say the end result of that transformational uh, renovation looks really nice. It really does, and I think it addresses most, if not all, of those those concerns, um, as opposed to the new. You know, the, the the new obviously addresses all our concerns, 
um, and that the issue from a perspective of a, a, an administrator in the building as well as uh, speaking for most of the <coughs> teachers, the biggest concern we have with the transformational renovation is the better part of two years of instructional disruption. Uh, we're not talking about an addition. Uh, that, that happens all the time. If we were having a, an addition, we would deal with a little bit of noise and dirt and, and disruption. But this transformational one would have us staging and moving students from place to place as one area gets finished, and it's over the better part of two years. Um, so from, from the perspective of people in the building working there every day, there are a lot of problems with that building. And a lot of those people actually went there and are, uh, you know, had, had gone through booth years ago and are, are still teaching there. They recognize those issues. Again, I know there's a lot of factors involved. And I, I hear if I, if I lived on Carriage Lane, I would have some of those concerns. If I lived in Centennial, I would have the concerns that they have. I, I get that. And, um, you know, ultimately, uh, the, the, as a principal and the staff of the school, we will respect your decision. But just, just wanted to make it publicly known that the, the renovation would really cause a disruption for the better part of two years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ashley Jackson. Good evening. My name is Ashley Jackson, and my address is 202 Groveland Drive in Peachtree City. Um, I had so many notes of what I was going to say tonight, and each time someone spoke, it, I, my heart wavered and changed. Um, our first speaker opened with such a poetic line, you know, with the whole scene of a child being injured on the ground. Um, I'm a mom. I worry about my kids all the time. Um, I want what's best for my kids. Um, I'm also here tonight to represent all of the busy parents who can't be here because they're shuttling their kids to practices or they're making dinner or they're showing a house because they're a real estate agent. I have currently have a friend who needs to leave, but she came to show support um, and to show her face. And I wish many others could have, but they can't because we are young parents of young kids. And I hate that our voices haven't been heard here at th these meetings um, because others who don't have kids in the system have been able to come and say their opinion. But I know from things like the PTO meeting that Kirsten Mellon mentioned, I know from speaking to parents, I know from being a faculty member at Booth Middle School that the, in talking to the community and the parents that come in on a regular basis that most parents are on board with this decision of a new school for exactly what Principal Green mentioned. We don't want our children being interrupted in their learning environment for the better part of two years. Um, I worry about safety with such a massive renovation taking place where my kids are. Um, <clears throat> another point, because like I said, as I listened to things and I saw things, I was going all over the place. I wish more people were here and excited. I got so excited when I saw those letters from Georgia Southern and Clayton State. That's an exciting thing for our youth, for our future. I want what's best for my child, and that's why I'm in Peachtree City, and that's why I made sure my kids could go to the current J.C. Booth Middle School because I personally feel like that's the best school for them. But now there's another option out there. This new um, school or location of Stagecoach, <coughs> not only the new location, but being able to utilize the current J.C. Booth as a center of innovation, a place for uh, more dual enrollment or whatever it may be, that's exciting for the young kids who would see the new location as well as the older children who would be in high school utilizing the old location for post-secondary opportunities. Not only for the McIntosh School District, but it will also benefit Stars Mill students because that location on Peachtree Parkway would make it easier for them to utilize dual enrollment, um, culinary, film, welding, whatever it may be. This is not a north side of Peachtree City issue. This is not a Macintosh or feeder pattern. This is something that could benefit our entire community and all of our children. And what I want is what's best for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rachel Wood. Um, my name is Rachel Wood. I live at 112 Bentwood Court in Peachtree City. Um, I actually grew up, moved here when I was five, and am now back raising my three girls. 
Um, we have a sixth grader that is at Booth and then two children that are currently at Huddleston. I most of all am here to say that um, I think we have great options. I feel that the correct option will, will be made and we all will benefit from it, especially the people that have children in this wonderful school system. Uh, that being said, I, my personal opinion is that a renovation is best. Um, I know that the pains of renovating are hard. <laughs> we uh, just finished our 40-year-old house that we gutted and redid it all. But um, I think that we have to respect the integrity of our infrastructure. I think that Peachtree City is a very young town, relatively speaking. Um, and we're going to have growing pains. And I don't think that, I mean, a new school, as much as I respect it and love the idea and want the kids to have all the new shiny things, I feel that the proposed renovation seems to check, as we've all seen the slides and presentations, almost all the boxes. Um, and I think the the biggest just elephant in the room to me is um, location, location, location. And you can't switch it. I love that my daughter can ride her bike or walk home or, you know, you see it. You have a whole social hour talking to other parents as you do the same thing. And um, that's that's what Peachtree City was built on is golf cart paths and community and community schools. Um, my mom was an educator, retired now, but uh, in the system. And we were just happened to be researching. And she said, oh, there's a referendum that passed in 1990, I believe it was, that the current city council then and the school board agreed that it was important for the growth of Peachtree City to have community-centered schools. And I just think that that's the most important thing. And I. I am concerned as a homeowner as to what, you know, continuing education, what that might bring, if there's going to be a mixture of outside counties and, you know, adults that come in to do continuing education. I think it's great, but right in the middle of our little town is a concern for me. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Marion Key. Good to see you again. Before I begin, may I ask Mr. Hollowell a question? Uh, you have said that these questions would be answered. Could you explain to us when and where and how we can get it? So much of this information has not gotten out to the public. You would be surprised how many people do not know about this new school or what's going on. So could you give us a timeline when we can expect the answers and what kind of format it would be in. I think we should probably have most of the answers by the end of the week. And uh, we, we were adding them to the Q&A we have on our website. Okay. And you think you'll have it by the end of the week and people need to go online. Will there be anything in the paper alerting people to that? Everybody does not look at the website to say, oh, what has the board posted to this day. Could that be possible also? I ask Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I just think it needs to get out. More people need to know about what's going on and so many do not. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Maybe I'm ready. Okay. When this project with Booth started, three years ago, the goal was to make Booth equitable to all the other middle schools. We learned then that the school needed, and I'm emphasizing the word needed, a gymnasium comparable to the other middle schools, a larger cafeteria, more space for the fine arts, band, music, chorus, art, orchestra, so on, and the usual renovations, HVAC, roof, paint, flooring, 
whatever. The cost at that time for what was needed at Booth was about $12 million. Now, I know that costs have gone up. Mr. Satterfield reminds me of that all the time. But since then, that $12 million cost has morphed into $50 million. All the wants and wishes of anybody who has spoken up has been added. The board is not a genie in a lamp who grants wishes. I've lived in Fayette County almost 40 years. During this time, the boards have always tried to fill the needs of all schools. For example, North Fayette needed larger classrooms, Fayette County needed an auditorium, Peachtree City needed a new gym, and Huddleston wanted to get rid of something. They were tired of mold and mildew in their school, and we were able to fill that need and many others in the county. As you all know, I have a special interest in Booth. Both of my children attended there, and two of my grandchildren. One will attend, and one has already attended there. So I should, by all rights, be here saying, I demand that you build a new school for my grandkids. And I want a big Taj Mahal, and I want all the bells and whistles. But I want you to know that's not why I'm here. And do you know why I'm not asking for that? Because my conscience won't let me ask for that. Because there are 23 other schools in this county who also have needs. And if $50 million is spent on a new school at Booth, what's going to happen to the needs at those other schools? They are just as important as Booth is. And I'm concerned there won't, I'm concerned there won't be enough money in the SPLOST, and money intended for the classroom should not be used on capital projects. Fayetteville Elementary, we've talked about, may need to be reopened. Tyrone may need to be reopened. Money needs to be expended at both of those schools. Tyrone needs classrooms. They need sewer connection, renovations, whatever. In closing, I have three comments. The taxpayers in this county need to hear the data, the facts, that this board is using to justify the need for spending over $50 million for a new school that is not needed. There are more taxpayers and voters in the county now who do not have children in the school system. A bad decision by this board will hurt future boards when they go to ask for money for the school system. Number two, the cost for supplying Booth's needs, not wishes and wants, but their needs, is somewhere now between 15 and 18 million dollars. With the seven million dollars provided by the state for, and I can't say this word right, modernization, the modernization grant, the cost will be closer to that 12 million dollar original budget. And this is what I think needs to be done. And last but not least, again I say, this board is not a genie and a lamp that's here to grant wishes for everything everybody wants. This board has a responsibility, not just to the students at Booth, but to the other 23 schools in the county and the other 19,000 students in this county. That is what you were elected to do. You have a big responsibility. And you know what? I'm glad I'm on this side of the podium. Good night. Thank you. Okay. All right, that's everyone we've had who signed up, but would, but would anybody else like to come forward and make a statement? Yeah. Just state your name and address. I'm 
I'm Mary Ann Browning, and I had emailed saying that I wanted to be added to the list. Um, I live in Peachtree City, and I'm the person, the teacher who rode her bicycle for 15 years to Booth when I was teaching there. John Foster Dulles, many, many years ago, once said that when the government sees a problem, they blindly throw money at it hoping the problem will go away. And I am seeing the expenditure for a new building in a remote area to be unneeded. I have questions. One, uh, have we, what would the sewer system be if that area does not have sewer system? B, what is the proximate, proximity to the cemetery? I know that there's a dirt road leading to where you want to build the school, but it's also not far from a cemetery. As a retired teacher, I remember we were always concerned about kids going to uh, McDonald's or Chick-fil-A after school. I sure would not want to see or hear of kids after school going to the cemetery to amuse themselves. What is the proximity? We don't know that. We do know that for emergency services, it could be difficult to get to the new school. Um, I, I agree with Marion's comments about the Taj Mahal. We do not have to renovate and become a Taj Mahal. Rather than move the kitchen, which was renovated about six or seven years ago, I think, and enlarged, we could just enlarge the cafeteria. There are a number of alternatives that have not been pursued or presented. And I think that these things need to be considered. Um, in order to keep renovations uh, at a cost effective and also minimal as far as distractions. Um, I, you know, I am concerned about the gym. Yes, we can just enlarge it. We don't need to build a new gym. Uh, the band room, the arts, the orchestra, we can enlarge what's there. We don't need to uh, completely do away with them. If we're enlarging classrooms, does that mean we're going to be increasing class size? I hope not. Uh, and, you know, there are so many unanswered questions. And I would like the board to delve a little more deeply into some of these possibilities. It should not be an all or nothing. Yes, we want the best for our kids, but a brand new building may not ensure the greatest instruction and the greatest learning. And I think that we need to look at all aspects of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Kate Scott, and it's actually my first board meeting, so I didn't know about the sign-up thing, so I'm good for next time. Um, so my daughter is a freshman this year at McIntosh High School, and I also have a fifth grader that is at Crabapple Lane Elementary. And my daughter is well on the track to be a healthcare pathway, so she'll absolutely be using that center of excellence. So I see both sides of all of the spectrum as to what kind of the existing infrastructure is. And I don't think we need to talk about how Booth is inadequate at this point. Like my daughter lives through that overcrowding and I would much appreciate my son not having to live through that. Um, but I'm, I'm surprised to hear the commentary about how much of this is a monetary discussion. Because we're actually talking about two very similar cost proposals. Yes, the new building is more expensive, but the renovation, the costs aren't final yet. And if you include that $6 million deduction, and then you take a 25% inflation factor, 
plus cost overruns, because let's face it, nobody ever knows what's inside a building when you do a renovation until you actually open it. You're actually only talking about $6.5 million. And $6.5 million, span it over 40 years that Booth has lasted us, becomes an extremely minor, minor point of cost. I view our children as an investment. I view the infrastructure as the toolkit that our kids have for their future. I am fully for a new building for our kids, and I am absolutely against my son having a degradation of two years of his learning ability at Booth Middle School. That, to me, is not an option for my child. So I hope that you can see that, to Ashley Jackson's point, there's a huge amount of parents that are absolutely passionate about it, and I feel like there's just not enough of us that we're able to make these meetings, but we absolutely are for this new building, and we would love the ability to get a larger audience to it, to be able to comment into you, so you can really hear and see all of these parents that truly want the best for their children, and hope that that can all factor in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do him first. Of all. My name is uh, David Smith. I live at 124 Interlocking Drive in Pierce City. I think Kate Scott just nailed the uh, the nail on the head there. Hit the nail on the head with what she just said. Um, you know, we moved. My family and I moved to Peachtree City in 2011. Uh, not because it's just a great place to live, because it is. It's a wonderful place to live, but because of the stellar school systems that we have here. And uh, I think a investment in our children's future with a new building would be money better better spent. Uh, like she just stated, the cost dif difference is fairly minor when you consider the bones of, of Booth Middle really aren't sufficient from what the, the principal said for the renovations that's, that's needed for uh, for the future of our children's education. I have uh, four children in the school system right now, uh, one in Kedron, one, one in Booth, and two in uh, McIntosh. Uh, they've, uh, two have been through Booth Middle, and it definitely is not sufficient for what's needed. And uh, I think also that the, what needs to be considered in the cost is that uh, you're going to get a brand new facility, but you also have Booth Middle that can be used for future education purposes. And so you're getting more bang, bang for the buck. And uh, I really also don't think that uh, putting our children through a renovation is best for their education as well. That's really all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Athena Frederick. I live in Arden Lee in Beechtree City. I have a sixth grader at Booth. Um, first, I'd like to thank Mr. Green for speaking tonight. I think that was very brave of him to to speak up and, and give his uh, thoughts about the new school and the reasons why we do need that new school. I have four children total. One, like I said, is a sixth grader at Booth. The other three have all gone through Booth and McIntosh and done really well. We've had a lot of growth in this area since then, and Booth is busting at the seams. Um, my main concern, you know, I understand the opposition to the new school and spending that kind of money on a brand new school, but I am really, really concerned about two years of renovation and where, how, how disruptive is that going to be? That's my, I don't think that's really been answered. We know it's going to be disruptive. Where are those children going to go? How are they going to go to school for two years? with a major renovation. This is not just a little make the cafeteria bigger thing. It's the entire school being renovated, and I'm really concerned about how this is going to affect children for two years. Where are they going to possibly put all of these children? How are they going to learn effectively with a renovation? So I know there's a lot of opposition to the new school, but I really don't feel like there's a choice. I really feel like we we are at the point where unless you go, unless you renovate the school and add another story, which is the only thing I can think of that would be the least disruptive, although I don't know exactly if that would, would even be feasible. I don't know enough about construction <laughs> to even make that statement, but I just in my mind, I'm thinking, how is this even going to work? I, I would like to know that first. I would like to see 
how that's been thought out and planned. Um, I think that, yes, a new school is going to, to be an expense, but it's an investment in our community and in our children, and I think it is the best answer and the only answer that is really an option. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Randy Huff. I live at 289 Spear Road. Um, I've been in Peachtree City for 46 years. All of my children are born and raised here. Uh, my daughter, Kristen, is raising five boys in Hyde Park, which is at the end of Stagecoach. She's in favor of this, uh, the new school. I'm opposed to it. So I don't know if I'll be invited for Thanksgiving this year as I have in the past. But that, that we'll have to work through at the family level. Um, I certainly um, am sympathetic to the idea of, of uh, young kids in middle school having to endure the, uh, the types of noise and dust and whatever else is a, uh, accompanies a renovation of the scale we we're talking about here today. And I spoke at, at a, an open forum uh, recently and, and made some suggestions. I'm going to make the same or at least a suggestion for an investigation that might be an alternative because it seems like it, it's an either-or situation, but there may be a modification. It's possible if, if the parents of the children at, at uh, at Booth are willing to see their children for that two-year period a bus to another school where there might be excess space. So to get the children out of the environment uh, that's, that's, uh, that would come to be in the event of a restoration, um, have you looked into the possibility of extra space at other school locations that would be of similar quality and what have you, um, and see if, it, if, if there could be a strategy of of busing uh, for that interim period, and maybe even in stages as the work has been done so you don't have to take the whole school and bus it away to some other locations at the same time, um, might be something to, that cures that problem. And, um, and while it would be inconvenient, and I know the parents would say, well, wait a minute, now it's going to toss everything up, or all our plans will be changed and whatever, but uh, if we're here to find a way to accommodate the needs of the, of the students uh, and, and not uh, drift off into other issues with respect to that, those which would come up from, uh, uh, from putting the new school up on, on Stagecoach, I think that should be considered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Christian Lauder. My wife made me come, so that's off record. Um, I think the biggest question I have is there's been some rumors about rezoning. I, I, I think that's the question is, one, is it going to happen? Are you guys looking at it? When, we, when will we find out? Um, I just need to know if I need to put the house on the market or put an application at Landmark. So that was my wife's comment. So I, will we know that by the end of, end of Friday? You said that there will be some... <laughs> I like that. So, I mean, I think I, I, that, that's the biggest question I have is, is, is rezoning a possibility? If it is, we'd like some heads up. So I think there's a lot of people in the room that would sell immediately. Um, so if we could get a timeline on that, that would be helpful too. Thank you. Hey there, good evening. My name is Tim Caillou and I have three kids in Huddleston currently. Um, and I had the fortune, mixed blessing, of being on that side of the desk uh, on a, another school board, having to go through a multi-million dollar fundraising effort for some new construction. And that was not fun. Um, I was the money guy on that board and took every opportunity I could to not spend money. Um, it was constantly a question that, that I asked and challenged the rest of the board of, if we want to do things, how do we do things in the most fiduciary way possible? Um, it wasn't my money that I was spending. It was, it was public funding. Um, and that was a hard conversation. There's no right answer. And at the end of the day, you want to be proud of the work that you do. Um, I, I struggle. I think a little bit with, with some of the transportation issues um, that were raised this evening because hearing the mayor talk, there is no money for um, 
any kind of road improvements. And I don't, and I, I drove those roads last night because I was not really sure what, what the future would hold um, and saw that there, there are some really severe road limitations um, to the site. Um, and and I, I'm kind of at a loss for, for what to do with that other than um, the city having to either do a transportation SPLOST, and I know that, that you know, SPLOSTs are all different in purpose, but at the end of the day, it's a tax that people have to vote on locally, and those aren't always popular. Um, and I know there was a recent GDOT study of, um, of the road through that area, and they identified a bunch of really significant traffic concerns for their long-term planning on the state road. Um, and this traffic generator was not part of those plans. Um, I know with, with um, cars backing up all along the road, if there isn't a place for those cars to go, um, it's, it's really a major challenge. Um, so look, I, I, I know it's hard, right? And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm the money guy, I was the logistics guy. Those are the kinds of things that I think about. Um, what I can say is um, with new construction that we had going on, um, which was a significant disturbance to students um, at a school, uh, we saw no degradation in test scores during that period, which is certainly not a benchmark of educational outcomes um, in the classroom, but is at least some kind of indicator of how disruptive at the end of the day would a renovation be towards, um, towards our students. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Hello, I'm Nikki Weaver. I live at 411 Constitution Circle, which is also in the Centennial neighborhood. We have five kids. We have an 18-year-old that just graduated Macintosh. We have two currently in sixth grade at Booth, one in third grade at Peachtree City Elementary, and a three-year-old. Um, we just found out about this meeting yesterday, and we had to jump through hoops to get here. We had to bring two of our kids with us and get the other ones to the sports that they're playing. And I'm sure there's other parents. I know there's millions of other parents in Centennial that texted me and said, hey, can you tell me what happened? Um, because we all heard about the redistricting. Um, there's good arguments, obviously, on both sides. And I didn't know all the factors and all the information before I came here. I feel like a lot of us are in the dark. Um, a lot of parents like myself that don't have time to jump on the FCBOE website and see if there's a meeting and see what's being discussed and talked about. I do think we need more public input and possibly a vote somehow of what we decide to do with all the factors discussed, including rezoning. That's our biggest concern. Um, we also bought into Centennial for the, our kids and for the schools that our kids would be going to. And we would plan to move or go to private school if something like this were to happen. I also own a business in Peachtree City. I'm very invested in Peachtree City um, and just feel like I'm kind of out of the loop on the factors involved with Booth Middle School. I don't know how redistricting works. Do residents get an input? Or do you all just decide, hey, these kids are going to go here, these kids are going to go there? That's another important factor that I think would need to be discussed or at least have public input, the taxpayers' input, who live in these different zones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michael Callis and uh, I also live in Centennial. And I gotta tell you, from, from my standpoint, is a year ago we moved into Centennial, we were in Cedarcroft. And I told my wife the only way that I was willing to move in Peachtree City is to keep the track of Peachtree City Elementary, Booth, and Macintosh. Because I think those are the best schools and that's the best track. I'm sure everybody else has their own opinion. My opinion is just my opinion. I represent only me and my children. I don't represent anybody else, working mothers or anybody else. I'm simply stating my opinion. So what I would say is this is, my main concern is the redistricting. I don't care if you build a school on the moon, okay? If you build a school and the kids can, the kids can, we invest in their education appropriately or we renovate the existing school, to me it doesn't matter. The education and the performance of the education is important. I lived, in, I lived in a more well-established area, a little bit of an older community outside of Georgia. When I lived there, we had construction projects on our school, and it was a disruption, yes. But we persevered. We all made it through. 
got good educations, made our way through, and here I am in Petrie City, which I feel is a great community raising a family, and I feel I'm fairly successful. If I can do that and be in Petrie City, I feel I'm fairly successful. So again, my concern is really around redistricting and understanding this. Remember that our children that we have here, we bought into this community because of the schools that we're in, whether it's Stars Mill, whether it's McIntosh, whether it's a, a junior high, or whether it's an elementary school. And again, when you have people that are buying into uh, a community and want to send their kids to a certain school, I think the board has to take that into account and make their decision appropriately. And I think if we're looking at redistricting, I think one of the things that we should do is we should look at those people that are in Petrie City and making sure they're in Petrie City schools. I know that the board says, hey, you know what, when you're in Fayette County, all we say is you're going to go to a Fayette County school. That's important. But there are, there are big differences between the schools and between the different demographics associated with the schools. That needs to be taken into account. I know we struggle with that in Kedron. I've read about it. I've heard about it. I've seen it. There's been many discussions about it. So why create another environment where we could potentially struggle? That's my only concern. Good luck making your decision. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Linda Manwaring, and I live at 307 Stagecoach Road, so I am going to be personally affected by whatever decision you make. It was not our understanding that you are going to redistrict anything or rezone for any of the schools. So if that has changed, then it would be good for us to know that. Uh, the other thing is that if this school is put on Stagecoach, the one way in, as my husband has said, and the one way out is going to be a significant factor. Apparently, there's no monies that have been prepared through the city for the road to be changed on Stagecoach. Stagecoach Road is a dead end dirt road. You can't pass there without falling into the ditch. So if you think that the um, school being placed at Stagecoach is going to be a better location for it. I'd like to invite any of you who would like to come down Stagecoach to come on down. You can sit on my back porch and have coffee and then you can make your decision about putting this new middle school at the end of Stagecoach Road. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else? Good evening. Um, my name is Kristen Hector. I'm from 112 St. Albans Way I'm in the Cedar Croft subdivision of Peachtree City. Um, I shouldn't be here. I was literally holding a handful of chicken when my neighbor came by and said, did you know this is happening? So um, like Ms. Jackson, I like to think that I'm speaking for a lot of parents who are at home um, and they're not able to be here because we primarily do feel uh, the pressure to keep the standard with our kids and with our schools. So over a decade ago, my husband and I looked to relocate and we put our finger on Peachtree City for the schools. Um, we did understand that we'd be paying a higher price to come here, but that was what we weighed out in making the decision to bring our children here, like I think so many other parents have done. Um, and in doing so, I think most of the parents here will tell you that we all um, do feel the pressure on our kids to keep up a certain um, standard at the schools, and that is reflected directly in a lot of the property values that the people here enjoy today. So in taking that into consideration, I do have a daughter who was launched from uh, Booth Middle School. A set, uh, I have a son there now in sixth grade, and I have a third grader who'd be there. My son right now um, would actually be there possibly for some of the construction and for a lot of the pressure that we're already feeling in keeping up and maintaining the standards of our schools alongside um, Mr. Green and the staff and administration who does an amazing job with the overcrowding that we already have. That would be a lot of um, undue trouble, especially like has already been mentioned with the price point being so minor. Transferring that pressure onto the families and the kids who are already um, feeling so much of that right now. I do believe that um, it would be a better decision, and I am here to speak on behalf of the, so many parents, like everybody said here, that would strongly, strongly prefer the new construction as opposed to um, all that is going to be carried with the renovation of the 
of the current site. I just I just don't understand. And also, um, on behalf, I'm in Cedar Croft, next door to Centennial. And I would say in the time that I've been there, um, I'd like to take into consideration uh, the parents that I've worked alongside with for the last decade in the schools, primarily being a lot of the Centennial parents. The time that we've poured into um, the schools with the PTO and with fundraising, um, I think that that is something that should be considered in deciding whether or not we're going to alienate those families who have invested in our schools. Um, if whatever numbers are being looked at in terms of rezoning or redistricting them out, um, how necessary that is in terms of cost and what the numbers are in terms of the population. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jay Shadler, uh, 704 Bostonian, and uh, I, I'm here for the uh, talk about redistricting as well. I, uh, I did learn a lot tonight, and uh, I see sides, both sides, uh, pros and cons about the school. <coughs> um, I'm uh, undecided about the school myself, but, but uh, I want to know who brought up redistricting in the first place. I, uh, I. I don't think that uh, any of y'all did. I'm going to speak to that real fast, if it's okay, Scott. Yeah. It wasn't brought up by any of the board. It's been brought up by other citizens and taxpayers, so it's not something that we're actively working on. Thank you. We, uh, I've lived here for, well, I grew up here and I moved back uh, about six years ago, and it seems to be about a two-year cycle on the rumors of uh, redistricting. And and uh, usually I uh, I just laugh it off and uh, forget about it but this time I, I heard that uh, that it was said by somebody who may be of uh, some importance which is why I'm here tonight but uh, I don't see a threat of redistricting especially the school is uh, the school has been talked about uh, being renovated for not because of uh, overcrowding but because uh, uh, bettering the cafeteria and the gym and all that stuff so uh, I see the need in that but uh, I'm good thanks thank you yeah just to um, re reiterate I mean the board has not had any discussions about redistricting or rezoning so I just kind of want to lay that rumor to rest um, if we ever do redistricting rezoning it's a very long process generally about a year I think um, about how long it takes us to to do it. But. And, uh, um, make a point of clarification on that. Sure. Uh, that you, you have to approach the podium, please. Uh, that question was posted to the people at the meeting in Peachtree City. Won't say by whom, but the question was asked: How many in the group would approve? of having rezoning, would favor having rezoning. And the answer was that nobody would. And I think that's probably where the concern arises and why we have as many people here tonight that are addressing that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just want to add, Scott, that um, you know, it's always best to call your board member or the superintendent rather than to rely on Facebook pages with inaccurate information. and. Um, and, and there is rezoning from time to time, depending on how populations grow. And but I don't, I'm not aware of any current plans we have. So. No. It, it's, okay. I got you. It was okay. It, it, okay. Uh, would anybody else like to comment? Yeah. Sure. Holly Maestas, uh, Centennial 808, Richmond Circle. What group, where in Peachtree City, what meeting? Was it a government meeting? Was it a dinner party? Who is bringing this up, and why is Centennial getting picked on over any other neighborhood? Thank you. <laughs> not, not at our meeting. Was it a PTO meeting? I, I think we're we're doing talking about two different things.
Okay. Right, right, right. Order. <laughs> so, uh, does anybody else want to make a comment? Pamela Kemp, 1410 Penfair Drive. I'm in Avalon Park, so I'm up the street on Robinson Road. Um, first of all, it sounds as if the redistricting question may be a straw man that's been put out there for who knows what reason. But I would be in opposition to the location of a new school um, because of the infrastructure concerns. Um, going from a four-lane road that services Booth, which is barely adequate at this point, going down to a two-lane road would be not good. So, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. If there are no further comments, I have a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.